Hello everyone and Jai Masi. This is a Christian Nepali greeting. First, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the NCFI SANE committee members and the conference planning members for this wonderful opportunity to be a part of this gathering. And thank you for letting me share from the word of God. I'm very excited to see the nurses from all over South Asia and Middle East come together. We are here for a reason. It is because we know and believe in Jesus. This is a common bond between us apart from nursing, but the most important one. In him, we find our identity, not of this world, but one that goes beyond the material world. One day, we will not be nurses anymore, but we are and will always be the children of God. To give you a short introduction of myself, I completed my Bachelor's of Science in Nursing in Nepal and then worked as a nursing instructor for two years. In 2016, I left my job and went into a missions organization in pursuit of growing my relationship with Jesus. I went through a discipleship training school, uh, got a training on medical missions, and also studied the whole Bible for nine months, which is a course called School of Biblical Studies. That is when I began to understand the beautiful and complete message that God wants to communicate with us, his beloved creation. It also compelled me to teach his word to people who want to understand the Bible and know his love. Since then, I've been teaching the Bible for a few years now, and I'm still in the learning process. So today, I want to share with you God's heart for healthcare as I've seen in the Bible. So my first point is, God has a heart for reconciliation and healing. Let's go all the way back to the beginning, Genesis 1, the creation story. Everything that God made was very good. There was perfect relationship between God and men, one human with another, and perfect relationship with man and creation. Genesis 1.27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Mankind was made to have fellowship with God, to enjoy the garden in his presence, to reflect his nature and character as the leaves on earth. All creation lived in harmony. But there was a tragedy in Genesis 3, the saddest event in history, when these humans failed to obey God. They listened to Satan's voice instead of God's voice. Since this event, life on earth has been a struggle and we have all seen it. They were sent out of the garden so the perfect relationship between God and men was broken. So I have a picture here. So this was the situation or the relationship during creation. God and men, they had perfect relationship and humans also lived in perfect relationship with the creation. But since this event, the relationship was broken. So the perfect relationship between one human and another human was also broken. Likewise, the perfect relationship between men and creation was broken. Death and sickness entered into human life. But in the midst of all this brokenness, God made a promise in Genesis 3.15 that says, there will be enmity between the serpent and the woman the offspring of the woman will crush the serpent's head and the offspring of the serpent will bruise his heel. This is actually talking about Jesus born of a woman whose death and resurrection would bring victory over Satan and its power. And Jesus did it. Romans 5, 8 to 11 says, we have now been reconciled to God through the death of Jesus Christ. 
God sent Jesus so that each one of us may be reconciled with him. Not only that, we are also made new through Jesus. We are in the process of being made like Jesus so that we can reflect his image, which is the original design of man. We are in the process of going back to the garden where everything was perfect, no more sickness, no more death. So if we read the gospels, we can see the ministry of Jesus. He preached, he taught, and he healed the sick. There are several accounts of healings and miracles. Why? Healing is the reversal of sickness and death. Jesus came for this. So when we are in the ministry of healing and reconciliation, whether it's physical healing or spiritual healing, we are joining in the ministry of Jesus. Now let's look at how God used people for this ministry in the Old Testament. Leviticus might not be an interesting book to read for many Christians, but this book is so important for us to understand the holiness of God and the weight of our sin that keeps us apart from going into God's presence. So I'll show you a picture of the tabernacle, what it looked like in the Old Testament. God's people were instructed to build the tabernacle so, so that God could dwell among them. There was the innermost part separated by the curtain. It was called the Holy of Holies. That, was, that is where God's presence would dwell. No one could enter the Holy of Holies because they would die because of their sin. God chose a high priest who would go inside the Holy of Holies once a year on behalf of the whole community to cleanse their sin. This was a ritual given to the Israelites. The high priest was the mediator between God and men so that they could have the right relationship with God. When Jesus died on the cross, that curtain was torn in two. And Jesus became our greatest mediator. And now we have direct access to God. Jesus has become our high priest. And he has made right our relationship with God. So God was preparing the way to bring reconciliation with men. God also gave instructions to people on how to live in a community. There are several chapters in Leviticus where God gives them several laws regarding sanitation, cleanliness, and isolation of infectious diseases. These instructions were given long before germs were even discovered by the scientists. For example, Leviticus talks about, uh, Leviticus 11 talks about clean and unclean animals, which is scientifically proven to be healthy and unhealthy for eating. Talking about a leprous disease, Leviticus 13.50 says, and the priest shall examine the disease and shut up that which has the disease for seven days. There are other verses which talk about coming in, coming in contact with blood and bodily discharges and how to purify from it. Deuteronomy 23, 13, it says, as a part of your equipment, have something to dig with. And when you relieve yourself, dig a hole and cover up your excrement. God clearly knows about community health. So God was teaching his people how to live in right relationship with each other and in the right relationship with creation. This is the creator God, who else, would, who else would know what is best for his creation other than the creator himself? We can see that God is in the process of restoring what was lost when people had sinned. Comparing the Old Testament times and the present times, the priests were given the role of identifying the diseases 
and maintaining the right relationships within the community. Likewise, today the health professionals are given the role of maintaining good health for people in the community. To clarify it more, I want you to think of a situation. When a sick person comes to you, they will tell you all of their problems and they expect to hear from you. They're willing to listen to you because you are qualified and it gives you the authority to speak what you know. They believe in your words and they will take the medication as you have instructed them. If the same information is given by a non-medical person, that person will not believe it. They do not have the qualification, so even if it's true, it doesn't give them the authority to say the things related to their health. So what I'm trying to say is that we are the people with authority to speak into people's lives. They believe in us and they depend on us. We have a role to bring restoration in people's life, physically and also spiritually. We can be God's agents to bring restoration in their physical sickness and in their spiritual sickness. So we have the God-given role to become his agents of reconciliation and healing. This is my second point. First Peter 2.9 says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I will just talk about one thing from this verse. We are given the title of royal priesthood. Royal, meaning children of the most high king, and priests the high calling of becoming the mediators between God and people. This is a big role that we have as Christian nurses and health workers. It is a big role as followers of Christ because we are not only dealing with the physical and mental brokenness, but we are also dealing with spiritual brokenness. But we have hope because of Jesus. When we are first reconciled to God through Jesus, we will be able to lead others into reconciliation and healing as well. So what I want us to note is that God's heart for each one of us is to be reconciled to him, to be brought back into right relationship with him. He wants the whole world to be reconciled to him and it's available through Jesus Christ, if only they can hear and believe. This is the good news that we have to share with the world. We have the benefit as nurses and health professionals because we have the opportunity to not only proclaim with our mouth, but we can also demonstrate it with our work of mercy and compassion as well. So as we end today, let us think about some questions. Are there any areas in my life that I still need to reconcile or make right with God? Are there any areas in my life that I still need to reconcile or to make right with God? We can ask for forgiveness and receive healing. And if not, this will prevent us from walking in God-given authority. Next question. In my clinical practice, how have I been or how can I be God's agent of reconciliation and healing to others? In my clinical, clinical practice, how have I been, or how can I be God's agent of reconciliation and healing to others? So let's think about these questions 